Listen, do you know all of the different settings that are in the Nutanix database service? Well, after watching this video, you will. Hi, my name is David Teague, Technical Marketing Engineer at Nutanix, and welcome to another one of our series of Database Solution Series videos. We're going to continue our implementation of our Nutanix database environment that we set up earlier by looking through the different administration settings. So let's get started. From the dashboard, we're going to go to the menu and choose Administration. From here, you can see the ERA service VMs. When you add other Nutanix clusters or enable high availability, you will see the service VMs for those services listed here. Right now, our service VM is the same VM as the NDB appliance. You could also set up an SMTP server on this page if you'd like NDB to be able to send you emails for alerts and tasks. Next, we're going to click on Access Control. This is where you can add users, but we're going to set up our Active Directory authentication first by choosing Authentication, then click on Configure. We're going to name the AD configuration. We're going to need to fill out the LDAP URL, which is usually the IP of a Windows Domain Controller. You can use LDAP or LDAPS. You can fill out the secondary as well, but only the primary is required. You will also need an account name that has access to read the Active Directory users and groups. If you have multiple Active Directory domains that you would like NDB to have access to, you would repeat the same process for those domains. Once we have the configuration filled out to our liking, we're going to click on Verify. And if we get the green checkbox showing that it authenticated successfully, we're going to click Save. Now we can start adding Active Directory users accounts. We can do this by going back to Users, choosing Add, and select Add User from Active Directory. Much like setting up Active Directory, you're going to need to fill out your username and click on Verify. Once that's successful, you can choose a role. I'm going to set this user up as a super admin. To set up groups so I don't have to set up individual users, I'm going to click on the Groups tab and then click Add. I'm going to set up the DB Admins group inside of NDB. Once we filled out the group name and it is correct, we're going to go to the next screen where we can choose the super user role. If you want to see the descriptions of each of the roles that come with NDB, you can hover over the blue eye. And I'm going to also set up a DB users groups with the same process, but I'm going to give them the DB Admin role. Now that I have authentication set up, I'm going to log out. And I'm going to log in with my username and password to verify that it is working. Now that we've verified that we can log in with our username, let's take a quick look at the included roles that come with NDB. This is also the area that you can create your own custom roles. The final section in Access Control is Entity Sharing Policies. This will allow NDB users to share access to a database server that they manage with another user so they can do operations such as backup and cloning. We're going to move on to the Nutanix Cluster section, but before I enable Multi-Cluster, I want to change the name of the Nutanix Cluster that NDB is running on to match the actual name of the Nutanix Cluster. To do that, I need to select the cluster and then choose Update from the Cluster Actions dropdown. As well as changing the name of the cluster on this screen, you can update the IP address of the Nutanix clusters and the credentials needed to authenticate to it. Once you've updated the name to your liking, then click Update to complete the process. Now that we've updated the name in NDB, I'm going to choose to enable multi-cluster. However, when I do that, I get an error after clicking multi-cluster that I do not have a network that is set up to be managed by NDB. To fix that, I'm going to click Cancel and head over to Networks. I'm then going to click on Add and choose Add VLAN. On the Add VLAN screen, I'm going to fill out the gateway, subnet mask, DNS, and domain name. I'm also going to need to fill out a range of IP addresses that NDB will manage. You can repeat this process for any other networks that you want NDB to manage that are set up on your Nutanix clusters. Once I'm happy with my selection, I'm going to click Add. This managed network can also be used when provisioning database servers, not just for the service VM for multi-cluster. If you select the VLAN you just created, you can see the addresses that are in use in that address range. Now we're going to head over to the Nutanix Clusters menu and choose Enable Multi-Cluster. I'm going to set a name for my agent or services VM, and then choose the network I set up. Once I have these settings to my liking, I'm then going to click on Enable Multi-Cluster. I can then click at the top of the screen to head to the Operations tab to see the progress of the operation. We're going to stop here with going through our different administrative settings in our NDB environment. Look for part two of this video soon, where we go through how to add another Nutanix cluster to our NDB environment. Click the video link to see the previous video in this series. Click subscribe so you won't miss the next video as we continue our journey of setting up our new NDB environment.